Hi guys, and welcome back. Thank you for tuning in for week three of our eight week broiler project. In case you're joining us for the first time, I am Katie with Townline Poultry Farm. And three weeks ago, we started one day old baby meat birds to walk you through the steps of raising your own meat birds week by week. Be sure to catch up um, by watching our videos from weeks one and two and subscribe for our weekly updates. So today for week three, we are going to talk about um, brooder changes and particularly feed changes that need to be made at week three to end up with uh, the healthiest meat birds that you can have throughout the rest of the eight weeks. Um, starting with temperature, I know I sound like a broken record, but temperature is the biggest factor and the biggest mistake people make in the beginning. Um, and even though we are out of the most fragile part of raising meat birds, or not even meat birds, of just raising chicks, the first two weeks are gonna be the most fragile and the most susceptible to te temperature issues. Uh, we're not in the clear just yet, and they do still need additional heat sources. So at week three, your thermometer, still under your heat lamp, should be reading between 85 and 90 degrees. Looks good. And same thing as last week, there's a couple different ways that you can do that. You can either raise your heat lamp up a little bit or expand your brooder. Uh, today, we are actually going to let our meat birds out into the whole pen that we have set up here. This is our standard setup here on our farm. Uh, we use equipment that is likely a little unfamiliar to you. Um, that's not necessarily easily available at a farm store and that's because we raise um, quite a few chickens, about 50,000 of our own breeders every year. So um, you'll still wanna use the equipment that you have access to and make sure that there's sufficient heat source. But for our um, setup, we're gonna go ahead and let them roam in the area that we typically raise broilers in. And we actually raise broilers at least twice a year for ourselves. Uh, the reason for that is, is we get our chicks or eggs from a breeding company. And we like to make sure that they are still growing the way that we would expect broilers to grow. So then, when we sell you our broiler chicks, we know what should happen. We know that they are growing consistently, that the breeding is still very high quality. So as you can see, we have a fairly large space to raise broilers. We usually do about 100 um, meat birds at a time twice a year. We did 50 for this project, but you can see here, this is actually a gas heat stove. So even though we have a very large area for them to roam, we will have two heat sources available still placing our feeders and our waterers at appropriate distances from the heat sources so that they can come and go as they are comfortable. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll up our, the paper here that we were using for brooder walls and let them have access to the whole space. You might have noticed that we've added more feeders and more waterers since the space is bigger. We don't want them all to crowd in one place. We want all of them to be able to um, access the feed so that nobody's getting crowded out. Um, and again, the equipment that you see, our, our hanging waterer and what we call feeder flats, these aren't things you'll typically find in a feed store, um, but we can definitely help you out to find uh, more appropriate equipment as the birds grow. For equipment that you would be able to find more uh, easily or more accessible at a farm store, check out the links below um, because equipment does sometimes need to be adjusted as the birds are growing to make sure that you have enough space for all of them to eat and drink. There is a big change that happens at week three uh, that has to do with the way that you are feeding them. The type of food is still gonna be the same. It's still gonna be the high percentage broiler starter feed that we've been using up to this point. So at week three, the way that you feed your chicks is gonna change a little bit. Up until this point, you've been allowing them continuous access to feed. They've been allowed to eat as much as they want, whenever they want, which is great for the first two weeks. But at week three, it is actually highly recommended to alter the way that you feed them so that you are allowing them access to their feed for only 12 hours at a time, and then taking away their feed altogether for, for a 12 hour period. So the easiest way for most people is to allow them continuous access to feed throughout the day. 
and then taking it away completely at night. We call this a 12 hours on, 12 hours off feeding schedule. So there's a couple different ways you can do that. You can either make sure their feeders are really full in the morning uh, when you do your chores and allow that food to run out at the evening time. You don't want them to run out halfway through the day. Um, or if you are filling their feeders more than once a day, you can just go ahead and take your feeder equipment out of the brooder space altogether for the evening. There's a couple reasons for this. The reason it is so recommended is that, I'm sure you've noticed by now, that broiler chicks grow very, very rapidly. And their growth rate does not slow down, but in fact, gets even quicker as we get into the later weeks. Um, you know, weeks five through eight, they grow wildly fast. So because they're putting on so much weight so fast, their musculoskeletal system, I'm not saying that right, <laughs> their muscular skeletal system cannot always keep up. It's not developing at the same rate that they are gaining weight. So what can happen is if, a, if they're sitting and eating and eating and eating and eating and they gain so much weight, by the time they go to walk around again, their legs can't support their weight anymore. It can, it can cause quite a bit, um, some pretty bad leg issues. It can, um, it's not their hips, what's it called? They can get what's called splay leg, um, or they, they'll just have a lot of trouble walking around and getting to food and water at all. So by taking away the food altogether at night, what it's doing is forcing them to get up and look around for food. They're getting exercise so that um, their bones can develop properly as they are putting on so much weight. Uh, another issue that can come up um, with allowing continuous access, never restricting any of their feed is heart attacks, which we will go over next week. Um, some signs and symptoms to look for if your chickens are having some health issues, particularly with their heart. Um, but by, by going on the 12 hours on and 12 hours off feeding schedule, most of those problems are prevented. It, is, it's, it helps a lot of people through this part and kind of through the rest of the eight weeks of raising broilers. So like I mentioned, your meat birds have changed a lot in the last seven days or should have by now. Um, ours are getting super big. So we're gonna go ahead and weigh them. If you remember last week, um, they were, I believe about five to six ounces. So if one will let me grab them here real quick. We're gonna go ahead and see where they're at this week. Our scale might not even be big enough for them. Relax, oh relax, you're all right. There we go, good. So our scale is reading at about a pound. So that's a pretty significant weight gain in, in seven days. So you have a one pound bird already at two weeks. That's, that's pretty crazy if you ask me, but, uh, and that doesn't slow down. We're aiming for for an eight-week project, we are aiming for a dressed out bird to reach about seven to eight pounds. So it looks like we're right on track. Um, and again, they do, they do grow quicker in the later weeks, which we will keep showing you. So I realized that we've gotten to week three and I've not really actually said the name of what meat birds, or what the name of a meat bird is. I've only been calling them meat birds or broilers. There are a lot of names for broiler chicks. There are multiple different names because there's a lot of different breeding companies producing them that give them different names. Ones that um, are probably the most common are gonna be Cornish, Jumbo Cornish, Cornish Cross, kind of anything Cornish related. Um, then there's some older names like Vantress, uh, or Cobb, or Ross, all these, or um, even Hubbard is another older term used for meat birds. So don't be confused by that when, when you're browsing for meat birds. Most, most hatchery suppliers these days call them Cornish or some variation of Jumbo Cornish or Jumbo Cornish Cross. So thanks for joining us for week three. We look forward to uh, showing you the changes that occur at week four. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Um, and comment any questions you might have, anything that we might not have covered or didn't think to go over. Um, and we'll see you next week.